this is Mainz in the morning. It's about eight o'clock. I'm just packing my stuff up. No, it's a different hat again. It's not quite as cold, but it's chilly. Um, I'm gonna set off towards Mannheim today for my last night in Germany. So once I get on the road, I'll, um, yeah, I'll show you where I am. So I've just left the campsite in Mainz. I'm just riding along. I'm heading uh, kind of north, I think. I'm just trying to find my way onto that big bridge over there. So I've got to cross that bridge and then ride on the uh, west side of the river. And it's probably the last time I'm on the eastern side of the river. It's all good. There's the bridge. Crossing the bridge is a bit strange. It's a bit blowy up there, very exposed. And the uh, wind is whistling towards me from the from the south from the southeast, I think still. Southwest. No, southeast, that's right, southeast. Just trying to get my bearings. Um, but I'm heading along this bank, following the year of 15 again, towards Mannheim. So let's see how we get on. Okay, quick change of hat. I've uh, had to put this on, I can't see a thing, the sun's too low still, it's about half past eight in the morning. Um, there's a sign up there which I nearly missed because I couldn't see it. So I'm finally quite pleased to leave Mainz behind. The campsite was okay, fine for a tent, a few complaints online but that was mostly because I think people bring too much stuff and expect too much. I mean you only need a piece of grass and a, and, you know, usefully a toilet but that's all I really needed. Um, so yeah, I'm heading that way, that's where the sign says. Um, I've just come from the centre of uh, Mainz along the riverbank there and it's just an absolute nightmare for cycling. It's just got all these modern cobbles, different styles of modern cobbles which make cycling an absolute pain. Uh, so yeah, town planners and architects, just remember that cobbles, modern cobbles are crap for bikes. So yeah, right, that's enough of that, onward to Mannheim. So once again, the year of Alo 15 is uh, being dug up along the Rhine in that direction. So the diversion sends me along these country uh, local tracks to um, the next little village. So yeah, it's fine though. It's probably no different apart from there's no river. So yeah, this is the way I'm going. More vines just behind me here on the hill. Quite nice cycling through this sort of countryside, and it's the right time of year, really. I don't think I'd want to be doing this in the, in the height of the summer with all the heat. It's a bit chilly still, but it's fine. It's fine. It feels really nice just cycling along. Quick stop for a drink. All these vines, they're all starting to uh, come into leaf now. I'm not sure what sort of wine is made here. I'll look that up. But yeah, absolutely fantastic landscape. Okay, just stopped for a second coffee this morning and I'm back on back on the bike heading along the Eurovelo 15. This route takes me to the little town village of Oppenheim. So that's where I'm off to now, just next to the river. All right, I've left uh, Oppenheim and I'm following along this uh, this section. I've been doing it for about 3K now. The terrain is shit, utter crap. It's these stupid concrete blocks and it's just 
almost uh, opposed to the tyres. Probably seemed like a good idea at the time, but it's rubbish. Um, riding along in the centre is no better because that's where all the big stones are. But uh, probably about 500 metres up ahead, I can see some pavement. So I'm looking forward to that. Okay, it seems like someone's realised that that path is utter crap uh, coming from that way. The, the surface is so poor. My, um, my Eurovelo 15 GPS track takes me that way, which is on yet more of the same crappy path. But the sign for Eurovelo 15 goes that way. So I think I'm going to take the Eurovelo 15 on the better path. Um, I've just looked at the map and they do meet up about five kilometers over there so uh, there's not much in it really but that's the way I'm going to be going. cycling this uh, what is basically Eurovelo 15 super highway for about 10k it's absolutely fantastic surface just uh, below a like a dike wall to my left which is stopping quite a lot of the wind brilliant really really good a much better alternative than the uh, bumpy track right next to the river which I've ridden on before so yeah I'm quite happy with this Sustrans in the UK needs to have a look at this because some of their routes which last for about 40 meters and they call it a long distance bike route absolutely hopeless so Sustrans if you're watching come and have a look at this this is how you do a long distance cycle route Okay, this behind me is quite a useful sign. It shows you the uh, Ryan Radweg in this area from Mainz at the top all the way down to uh, where it joins France at the bottom. So I'm gonna just take a good look at that and uh, probably take a couple of pictures so I know exactly where I'm up to. The road route goes on that way. Um, I'm just gonna get my iPhone out and just give you a taste of the wind again. It's just absolutely crazy. The wind has been blowing from that direction for nearly 700 kilometers now into the wind, very rarely out of the wind. So that's the wind from the uh, iPhone recording. I'm almost entirely deaf. This is whistling past my ears. Absolutely crazy. I'm still following this super Eurovelo 15 super highway local cycle route pan-european cycle route it said on the sign which is fantastic and no sooner I was talking about how strong the wind was it's now behind me for the first time in 700 kilometers and I'm doing nearly 30 kilometers an hour now so I've been doing 20 with a headwind so that's how much it's taken out of this trip with a little bit of a lighter breeze Things would have been different. But yeah, here we go. So into the next place with a slight tailwind, but I don't think it will last.
for a sense of the wind. Look at that tree. I'm just coming into Vorms now where I'm going to have some lunch. Just uh, picked up the Rhine River Bank again. It's absolutely beautiful. Really amazing today. I'm not sure how much you're going to be able to see of the smoke and steam coming out of these chimneys that I'm going to show you in a moment. But I can remember some time ago online I found like a gauge that told you um, the angle of the you know the, the smoke or the steam uh, versus the uh, wind speed that's uh, pushing it. So I'll see if I can find that but uh, if you have a look at these they seem to be coming out and then pretty much horizontal. Now of course that's fine if you can pick that up but I'm going straight into it again so yeah all good though. All right, back on the road again. Stop for a quick sandwich in Worms, and uh, I'm now heading towards Ludwigshafen, Ludwigshafen am Rhein, which is about 20k down here. It's opposite side of the river to Mannheim. So yeah, looking forward to this bit. Okay, this is really good. I've just come out of Worms. I was heading around this part of the cycle track and in front of me I can see the hills that start to form the Necker Valley just the other side of Mannheim and behind me is the Vosges du Nord northern Vosges mountains in France just the start of those so it's really great I'm just getting to the point now well, I know this area. I know, I know where I'm going. So, yeah, looking forward to one more night in Germany. Then moving on to France. I have to say, the river on this uh, this section of the ride's been a little bit hidden. It is just the other side of this wall, this uh, earth wall here. You can't really see it, so a little bit strange that, but uh, keep catching glimpses of it as you as you ride along. It's still great, great to see. All right, I'm making my way through the middle of uh, Ludwigshafen, BASF town. Just trying to find the town centre where I'm going to stop, have a little break before I locate and set off for the campsite. So yeah, here we are. Well here I am, that lovely place over there is downtown Mannheim. Or at least I think it's Mannheim, it says Mannheim on the map. The place I'm in now is Ludwigshafen and uh, it's equally as impressive. Uh, I'm just going to try and uh, spend a few minutes having a drink, have a good look on my map and find my, uh, my next route. I'll probably use Google Maps to direct me to where I need to go now. Probably only about 20k. I've done 82 so far so it should be and will be over 100k a day so I'm pretty pleased with that. So here's Mannheim. I've just noticed there's a red board over there, just beyond that cruise ship. It does say welcome to Mannheim. Hmm, good. Okay, I'm leaving those places behind now. I've been to the supermarket, done some shopping. That was one of the most stressful things ever, using Google Maps to guide yourself on a bicycle in a town. It's always, turn left, turn right, turn right, then turn left, slide left, slide right, do a U-turn, then turn right. And it just goes on and on and on. I wouldn't mind seeing the trace of that though. I bet it's pretty crazy. I was all over the place. Probably done an extra 10K just trying to find a supermarket. But there we are. 
All right, so I've just clocked over 100k for today. That's five hours, 23 minutes. Quite pleased with that, because there's a lot of cocking about in those last towns with Google Maps. If Google tracks me, steals my data, and follows my every move, I'm sure it's gonna have fun with that. All it's gonna see is me going round and round in circles, trying to follow it. Anyhow, a couple more K down this road and we should be somewhere near the campsite. I'm just cycling into Speyer now, just uh, seeing the sign for the town. I think I've got to go up to this junction and then turn left and the campsite is down there somewhere, down by a lake. All good.